Okay, but uh, well, thanks for joining uh, the Youth Ministry course one more time. It's good to see you all. Um, so this course is called the Introduction to Youth Ministry. Um, so this will be one of those shortest courses that you will do in uh, in this uh, Bible College degree uh, the degree course itself. So uh, yeah, it's not going to take more than three weeks, maximum four weeks, depending um, if we need more time. But that's about it, um, which is why I have already shared your uh, final assignment um, in the stream section. It's just a book uh, report for the uh, for the in-person student and the online um, for you guys. And it, the assignment is very different for those who are doing the course on e-learning. E okay, So that's just. Uh, a gist of this course uh, it's an introduction um, so we're not going to go too deep into uh, what youth ministry is and uh, and and everything else that is associated with uh, youth ministry in general so uh, we're just going to look at take a sneak peek of uh, some of the challenges that the youth leaders face that the youth are going through in the current day and age um, and, and and all of this course is about just giving you guidelines and uh, how you can uh, kind of take in some of the inputs, suggestions uh, from this course and adapt it and uh, kind of customize it to the setting that you are at. And it's absolutely fine if you're not a youth leader, if you are not involved in youth ministry itself. But I think, um, and I hope that this would be a helpful course in general otherwise, okay? Um, right, so, uh, We'll start off with, a, 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 I think, a very important question, a good question to answer. Uh, who, according to you, right, in your opinion, in your suggestion, uh, the way you think, who are the youth? What comes to your mind uh, when you think, okay, youth, this is who they are, this is what defines them? You can answer in a sentence, or you can um, even give me a word that you associate the youth with. Okay. Eighteen plus. All right, uh, come on, guys, talk to me. Uh, Roslyn, Savashish, um, how would you define youth? Who are the youth? Lyndon? Um, yeah, Collins, go ahead, please. I think a youth is the any person who is a, 18 years and above, but less than 40, 35. Okay, 18 years and above and less than 35, okay. All right. Uh, Pastor, praise the Lord. So I suppose age 13 to 19 are considered teens and above 18 to 19 until 35 are considered as youth. It's considered as youth, okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, Collins. Thanks, Lyndon. You're very energetic, powerful, uh, between 18 and 30, okay. Interesting. The age bracket has been reduced by five years now. Okay, uh, Roslyn, what do you think? Aradhana, John, who are the youth? People who are young at heart. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll all come into in that category. <laughs> yeah yeah well thank you uh, i think uh you know it's always important to kind of ask a fundamental question i guess uh it, depending on uh, no matter who the audience are like you need to ask yourself that question okay who are the audience uh, how do you define them as and and as a leader it's also very important that how they view you as and now that's a very from a leadership perspective and how does your audience 
or in our context, your congregation view you as, uh, you know, they, they, do they view you as uh, a pastor or a teacher or a leader or a brother, uh, whatever, you know, um, sister, just to be inclusive, I guess. Right. Uh, so Roslyn says, youth is someone who knows the difference between right and wrong and still choose wrong. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and not everyone, though, but uh, age limit can be 16 plus. OK. <laughs> oh, wow. OK. That's uh, quite a bold uh, and honest statement, Roslyn. But thank you for sharing. OK. So uh, some of the uh, definitions, which uh, some of the world um, you know, leading in organizations or institutions claim or the way they view uh, at the youth is this. The United Nations, uh, for statistical purposes, defines youth as the persons between the ages of 15 and 24, uh, without prejudice uh, to the other definitions by member states. So 15 to 24, you have that one. And uh, the United Nations General Assembly defines youth as a person between 15 and 24. It's the same thing. 15 and 25, the World Bank and uh, the Commonwealth Youth Program refers to young people as between 15 and 29. And uh, most of the bishops' conference refer to the youth as from 18 to 30, 35. It's what uh, you call, which is the age bracket which some of us have defined. Right? Um, um, now, beyond all these uh, definitions uh, or uh, or beyond numbers, if we if we just if we can look at the youth or uh, more than just eighteen plus and below thirty five, um, you know, I think something that we will learn along the way in this uh, in this course is that they are very dynamic, right? They're very energetic, uh, and most of the ad companies, uh, advertisement uh, companies, uh, be it present and also in the past have always uh, always studied uh, young people uh, because they are the trend setters so to speak um, so uh, what kind of trend are the youth um, are following in the society uh, what is what are they talking about uh, what are how are they dressing uh, you know um, how do they define style? How do they define fashion? What products uh, are they consuming? Uh, what appeals to them, um, right? And uh, and so and this is how uh, even the society or the ad advertisement agency uh, study the young people because they're very vibrant. Um, you know, they are into all kinds of things. Like, talk about technology, fun, adventure, relationships, uh, sports, arts. Um, they are in there in the talk. Right, and uh, some of them also, uh, you know, but while they are good at it, um, how much? How, um, I'll I'll just very give you very briefly, um, you know, how I was eighteen plus, and maybe you can share how you were and maybe or relate. Uh, some of us are not too far away from eighteen, um, <laughs> but uh, okay, so. The way I can remember my teenage years, uh, the early, we'd say at least 17 to 22, um, or 23, 24. I think 23 or 24, I started tapping out. Uh, uh, but was very energetic, very spontaneous. Uh, you know, uh, that's the kind of age group where you don't aim and shoot, you shoot and then aim. You know, uh, something somewhat like uh, Peter was um, in the Bible, but uh, you know. But do you relate to any of that? It's very energetic, very uh, you know, like uh, so full of life and spontaneous, and uh, and not worrying a lot about the consequences. The consequences can be good or bad, but then it's that attitude of okay, this is you know, to quote Nike. Just do it, kind of a thing. Attitude, isn't it? Uh, and and that's how uh, you know the world views at the youth today as well. It's changed a little bit in terms of uh, yes, they are energetic. Yes, they are full of fun and full of life and adventure, and and whatnot. But then yet, uh, you know, they somewhere we have begun to label them as okay. This is a multitasking generation. Uh, their attention span is reduced to five minutes, so to speak. 
and they connect with online more than um, anything else, right? Um, so now that we've understood who the youth are, kind of, uh, you know, who they are and what their age limit is, and uh, why do we need to focus on the youth as a church? It's a question for you. Why do we need to focus on the youth? Should the church have a youth ministry? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah Pastor, I didn't mean to interrupt. Were you saying, uh, like, completing the question? No, 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 go ahead. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I I feel it's very important, uh, especially uh, if I think about uh, like my life. It was through uh, students, you know, uh, like a college students ministry that I came to know the Lord. So I always am very grateful for such uh, ministries because uh, those people don't have to do it. We are like, mm -hmm. we are well, total strangers for them, you know, if I consider those people who really poured into our lives, they are complete strangers, but still, uh, you know, they consider us to be their own children and uh, they open their homes mm -hmm. uh, and let us see uh, how, how their lives are, you know, being very yeah. transparent about uh, how their marriages, how their kids are how they're raising the kids and all that so it's it's i feel the youth should be exposed to those realities of life yeah. Yeah. uh and uh if there are such people you know who are able to be so transparent that uh, uh, it helps the youth to understand that it's it's not like fantasy life is not right. only fantasy it it, right. There are realities involved, so right. I'm uh, I, personally for me. I'm very grateful for the youth ministries. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, also to the uh, earlier question of um, like the age group. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I was I I was thinking about uh, uh, the youth as a very uh, you know they are what i mean to say by very malleable it's like uh, especially for me at those times i used to get very inspired <laughs> by mm. seeing uh great you know role models so i right. used to get very much inspired by people who would be giving uh, by showing me a great example so mm. that really helped me uh to make the right choices i would say Right. So, yeah, by God's grace, uh, like there were such people, you know, in different stages of right. our lives that, uh, yes, uh, we could see them and try to imbibe or incorporate those values into us. So for right. youth, especially coming out of their teen years and all that, it's very hard. Right. The transition is really hard, I would say, for them to be, you know, like an adult. Some people look yeah. at them like adults. So, yeah. so for them, it's very confusing Correct. how, how yeah. to fit yeah, to different situations. So yeah. I believe they really need a lot of guidance. So to have those right examples, to have the biblical, you know, foundations uh, in the sense, as we know in the Bible, it says, how can a young man keep his way pure by living according to the word? So. Yeah. So if those uh, values are, you know, uh, imbibed into them, it right. can be that they, they, they have a, you know, long life ahead, wherein they can put into practice such things and inspire others. So right. that's very yeah. important. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks, Divya, for that. It's yeah, just a wonderful, elaborate uh, answer. Um, yeah, uh, one of the points that stood out when, as you were talking, um, as you were sharing, is uh, they don't have to open up their houses, but they do it. Um, there's something beautiful about that. You know, as you mentioned, they're strangers in a way uh, until you get to know them. But then, um, yes. So yeah, th I've been impacted by by such leaders as well uh, in my adolescent years. Um, okay. Um, 
All right, I see uh, Abu sharing for the preparation of future leaders. Yeah, we need to take, we need to care for the next generation. We need to, yeah. Um, these are a set of people who need help. They don't necessarily take help from their homes and, uh, and they value care from a genuine source. Okay, yeah. So um, let's look at all of these responses and still see if we can have a solid why, okay? And uh, if possible, you can make a note of all these answers that we are getting from people as well, right? Um, so why is youth ministry important? Now, you, um, you, if you Google this question, you will get a lot of answers, but you will get a lot of answers of, the, of other people. It is, uh, it is their answer to the why. It won't be your answer to the why. Um, and so, uh, which is why, in this, as much as this is an introduction uh, to the course, um, we will be self-reflecting a lot, asking a lot of questions to yourself as leaders or pastors, is why are we doing what we're doing and uh, why do we need to do, etc. okay? So, uh, so the question still remains. Um, Hey, okay, if you're saying, Abu, that uh, we need to prepare them uh, for the preparation of future leaders, uh, why is that important? Why is it important that we prepare them uh, as future leaders? Um, because in the future, why should I think, as, okay, I need to prepare a group of people for, to become future leaders uh, because uh, in the future I will not be there. So how does that matter to me? If you are there, you can uh, unmute and uh, share, or anyone can respond to that on uh, that uh, you know statement. I think it matters to me, basically, mm -hmm. as a way of fulfilling God's command, because we see back then in the in Exodus and Deuteronomy, where God was like teach your kids the ways. You know when Moses was teaching you know Israel in Deuteronomy. And the, we see that the, they say that teach this the the law the, the the ordinance of God to the kids so that when they are old they do not depart from this way. So I think it is very important for me for the continuation, if I may call the torch of life and and sure. the, the ordinances of God. Thank you. Thank you, Collins. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, one it's okay. So we can come to a conclusion um, saying that okay, it's we've been commanded. Right, it's uh, we've been commanded by God, right? Just like the Great Commission and uh, other commandments, we have been commanded to uh, instill and teach uh, our children about the ways of God. Okay, all right. Um, we need to care for the next generation. Um, just a little bit deeper is okay. So why do we need to do that? Now let's um, take the context of what uh, Divya shared. Okay, so we are. Sorry, Jake. so I mean, just to, taking into consideration what Divya shared, for example, like she said, we can be strangers, you know, uh, it's the strangers who opened up their house. Um, so why do we have, why you, we, or the youth leaders, or why do we need to care uh, for strangers? Uh, yeah. Uh, one reason is, uh, they, the the second point which I mentioned, there are a set of people who really need help, and yeah. uh, because they will only take source um, help from a source which is genuine to them. So if we right. are available for them to offer genuine help, they they take it and it would be greater good. Rather than if we, if the church is not available uh, to care for the youth, there is mm. high chance that they would approach other sources. Mm and move away from uh, the love of God. It could be peer right. pressure, so, it could be worldly stuff, yeah. Sure, okay, so to understand it more clearly, we are offering to care for the next generation and to offer to help um, simply because they need help, right? In addition to what, in addition to uh, we've been commanded by the word of God. Right, 
right? And also in First John yeah. chapter two, we read, uh, "God loves uh, young generation," and He says, "Young people, I have spoken to you because you have overcome the wicked one." So that is God's heart that our young mm. people would overcome uh, the the temptations or the problems that they go through. That is God's heart. Yeah. So we follow God's heart. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, JP. Uh, th would anyone else like to add to some of these questions? Because uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I've been pondering about the thing. You know, future leaders. You know, uh, there was a time we were the future. Do you remember that? And like, <laughs> like oh, you are the future of this nation. Uh, <laughs> uh okay so i leave that at that um it's always made me wonder so they are the future leaders um okay so what about it you know <laughs> uh i understand i mean don't get me wrong okay it's very important that they are the future leaders and that we shape them but um i just don't want us to get lost in uh in it, somewhere along the way, that statement seems to have or seem to have lost its significance. Uh, they are the future leaders, future gener generations, and um, and so if they are, and the way they are shaped, I believe uh, one of the reasons why I believe youth ministry is important is, for example, let's take your our own personal lives, right? Um, now, okay, so some of you are let's say uh, an engineer in by profession right that's your current thing uh, but but in the past today was your future but you had to study really well and graduate uh, from an engineering college to be an engineer in the present day which was your future in the past right and so some so something tells me that your future is kind of shaped in the past for, for example, in our context, uh, our future, our tomorrow or our, our future years are shaped somewhat in today, like how you work towards it, you get better at your skill. And then that kind of shapes um, the future. And so when we say, and why do I feel youth ministry is important? Yes, it is you know, God's word, God's command uh, has commanded us to instill you know, uh, his ways, his precepts, his statues into um, the next generation, um, and and I think the future leaders are shaped more so uh, by the current leaders. Um, they they look at how the present and the current leaders uh, live life. How do they do ministry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, so yeah, that's uh, all of that is right, guys. I mean, so thank you for sharing your answers. Uh, but this is a very important question uh, that you need to uh, we all need to answer i would say okay so um uh, dr gc mana uh, from uh, the director general of uh, cso which is central statistic office of indian government um so he says uh, youth is the most valuable segment of the population human resource potential of individuals not only gain maximum but also reaches its peak during this period so youth in reality represent the present uh, represent the present of a country. So um, you know, I'm mean, just reading the quote from the notes that I've shared. It says youth in reality represent the present of a country. So young ones, when nourished properly, can grow like a huge redwood tree, but if not controlled or neglected, can erupt like a volcano. Um, if you know anything about uh, redwood trees, um, redwood forest, you can Google them. They are found in California, um, in I think the northern part. Divya might know better, but uh, the redwood forest—they are huge trees. Like, um, and I, I I know it because uh, they use that wood to make guitars as well. So, <clears throat> supposed to be a good tone wood for guitar, but that's how I came across them. But they are huge. They are hundreds and hundreds of years old. Right, so uh, the author is saying that if they are nourished properly in the present, they can grow like a huge redwood tree. The future, 
right? But if they are not controlled or if they are not nourished well, if they are neglected, like what again JP was saying, is John uh, saying that we need to care for them because if we if they don't, if they're not nourished, if they don't take care, uh, the future is not going to be very bright. The future is going to look dangerous. It can erupt like a volcano that will destroy everything in uh, you know on their way in their way so no country can afford to ignore its youth we simply cannot afford to ignore the youth uh, india is the youth nation in the sense that it shares the youth in its population in 2011 alone it stands at 34.8 this is the census according to 34 in 2011 now by 2020 it had doubled in that percentage uh, I, I apologize I'm, I'm giving the number based on the the indian context uh, i do not know about the other nations uh, where they are at so please forgive me for that um, and I mean, you can do your own research on where your country um, stands, and I think it will be helpful for your context and how you can serve the young people in your country. Okay, um, so the youth of a nation are the trustees of prosperity. Youth is a huge reservoir of energy which needed to be tapped and harnessed intelligently for the development of the society. Um, and I think uh, this is where mo some of the churches, if not most of the churches, some of the churches and some of the Christian leaders get it wrong, or miserably and horribly wrong, is that um, we, we don't know how to tap into this reservoir of, en of their energy or uh, harness their energy very carefully. Um, it is very easy for us to quickly label them uh, and reject them uh, you know that is okay if they disagree with you you're rebellious we don't want you uh, you know no clean shave you have a beard you know go away you you know um, prodigal son <laughs> uh, you know there's a lot of tiny small silly uh, things that can um, <clears throat> that has stopped young people from entering the church is simply the current leaders have not understood how to intelligently uh, you know care for them and by you know i would say that we haven't been sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit enough to care for them to nourish them to uh, love them the way they are to accept them the way they are um etc okay um and i and the world understands the uh, the power of the youth. Um, some of the terrorist organization, uh, at what age do they get the, uh, the children? At what age do they start brainwashing their children? Is at a very young age, uh, not even in their teenagers. It, it's, it's at a very young age, below 10. Um, and some of the videos are very scary. Why? Because they know that if we can get them young, if we can just brainwash them into teaching them this is who they are this is who they are this is their life objective this is their life of you know um this is their destiny that they were born to destroy that they were born to destroy kill that's that's their life agenda and um you know the evil one understands it um the enemy uh you know wants to kill the next generation that's who he wants that is what he wants to do and the world seems to have understood, uh, you know, why they need um, to go after the youth. And sometimes, somewhere along the way, a youth ministry has just become another label or another event, so to speak, that the churches do. Um, okay, let's add, you know, oh, we don't have this in our church. Let's add youth ministry uh, because it sounds cool, you know, that, that shows that, hey, there's a youth ministry in our church. Um, you know, we, it's, it's just, I'm not saying that all the churches are doing that, but, you know, you have to understand what I'm trying to say is that it is possible that we've reduced the youth ministry aspect of it to just so that our church can sound cool, our church can sound present, not really understanding who they are, uh, you know, why do we need youth ministry? 
uh, what what has the world labeled them as and how do you look at them right and i'm very glad that you know all of us in this class have a very similar understanding of uh, who the youth are and why it's important you know we are all kind of in a very similar page uh, you know there is a time where uh, you know i was leading the youth ministry of at apc and uh, and god took me uh, to this very specific verse in numbers 14 14 verse 31 I think um, it says um, numbers fourteen thirty one. Um, it says, "As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them into joy, the uh, the land you have rejected." That is from the NIV version. Um, right? It says uh, another ESV version says, but "Your little ones who you said would become a prey, I will bring in." and they will know the land that you have rejected. Um, New King James Version says, but your little ones whom you said would be victims, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which they have despised. Um, you know, he was reminding me of this, from this verse, I should say, uh, that, you know, there's there are a lot of labels assigned to the young people, to the, to the, to the young generation in this day and age that, um, you know, um, it's from millennials to Gen Z, X, Y, Z, um, uh, now to the generation alpha, and um, they are a multitasking generation. Uh, they are addicted to their phones, uh, social media addicts, um, whatnot, uh, shorter attention span, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are all these different labels that is associated with the current day younger generation. Um, where, as a church, if we look at them from the same lens, we will lose them. We will also begin to say that, you know, who are these? They are going to. They are victims. They are prey. Um, you know, which can be a fact, but the truth is God loves them. Right? The fact is different from a truth. Um, you know. And that's why it says in Numbers 14.31, it says, as for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, uh, what we say, uh, what we label them as, uh, we have to be very careful about that. right? Um, because God says, I will bring them in. I will take them in. Right? In his grace and in his mercy, in his sovereignty, uh, he will bring them in. And so, and we will choose to be God's vessels in this journey of being youth leaders, pastors in general. Okay, um, even in the scriptures, uh, there is a beautiful theory. Now, I'm not a uh, Bible historian uh, by any stretch of imagination, but there is a very compelling uh, and a convincing theory that disciples of Jesus, except for Peter, they were all, they were all teenagers. Um, now this is we're not going to go too deep into that, but I would uh, suggest if you want to look into that, please feel free to do that. Uh, but you know it kind of makes sense because uh, here's the thing. Now when we talk about discipleship in the Jewish culture, um, is the roots are so deep that the, the rabbi culture and the synagogues was um, Galilee was like a birthplace of that discipleship culture. Uh, and, and I'm not surprised Jesus would choose uh, you know, the place as his base for ministry, right? Capernaum. It's, it's all in the small towns from the town of city of Galilee. And um, so this is how a Jewish life would be, right? From, uh, when a kid is born, a kid is sent to school from the age of two. Uh, it's a, like you know, and by the time they they are eight, they will know the entire Old Testament by heart. Um, okay, um, so the Jewish Bible, uh, the Old Testament, uh, is called as the Tanakh, right, which is the Tanakh. Okay, um, so Tanakh. Tanakh. So uh, there are three different letters or words put together. Um, so the Ta means Torah, which is the which refers to the first five books of Mo, uh, Moses or 
um, Pentateuch, as it's popularly known. So you have the Torah, you have the Nevim, which is uh, uh, the prophets uh, writing. So all the major prophets, minor prophets, and even um, Joshua uh, all, all comes into that category. And then there's the Ketuvim, which means the writings, such as the Psalms, the Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, Esther, uh, the Ruth, all of these books come under that category. So you have the, the law, which is the Torah, and you have the prophets, uh, the, the Neovim and the Ketuvim, so Tanakh. Um, by the age of eight or nine, uh, every Jewish kid will know the, the Old Testament Bible by heart. Okay, now what happens, uh, now that is about, uh, the, the, that school is called Beth Sefer, Beth Sefer, okay. Uh, now, after this, the young people have a choice. Now, do they, they can choose if they want to uh, continue studying, if they could afford it, if their, if their family could afford, because education, again, was not, uh, uh, I should say, affordable enough yet, okay? So they had two choices. They could either choose to study further and the other choice was to go back into their family business, begin to take uh, help their father, their family in their family business, uh, whatever they were involved in. It could be carpentry or fishing. Uh, you know, suddenly rings a bell, isn't it? And so, um, and uh, and so now you, you know you kind of understand where uh, you know where the some of the disciples of Jesus were you know Peter James John they were fishing they were taking care uh, you know of their father's business and that's why the Bible says they left uh, you know and the father was still there they left the the fishing net as they were and they followed Jesus uh, and so Jesus you know if the theory is and it's convincing enough, if it's true, Jesus chose young people to change the world. Jesus chose a bunch of teenagers, uh, you know, young people to change the world. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, understanding the importance of youth and youth ministry is not new uh, in, in, in the world that we live in. Every generation that's gone before us have understood the importance of the young people, of the youth, um, right? And so, and Bible is very clear about it. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. So remember also your creator in the days of the youth. That's one scripture that is my grandmother used to say, you know, every time and time again. And so uh, that too, she used to say that in Tamil. Uh, so, I will, you know, I know that, okay, Ecclesiastes 12, 1. Uh, so remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. If they, okay, okay, I will remember. You know. <laughs> and then you have Psalm 119, uh, verse 9, which they were quoted some uh, time ago. And Ezekiel 16, verse 60, uh, yet I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth. And Proverbs 20 to 6, Jeremiah 1, verse 4 to 8. Um, so a lot of emphasis, um, you know, has been given to the youth, the, the, their generation. Um, why it's important, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, uh, and so another why we can look at is um, is teaching young people in the church to grow in their relationship with the Lord prepares them to serve Christ in all they do. Right? As a result, this nurtures the congregation and allows the church to flourish. So we're talking about future leaders, but when we nourish and take care of them today. Uh, it nurtures the congregation as a whole and allows the church to grow, to flourish. Right? Timothy, at, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Um, we looked at that verse quite extensively in the local church um, subject course that we did last time. But uh, this is, again, just to emphasize... Uh, you know, the importance of it. And, you know, when I was putting this content together, I asked some of the youth leaders, uh, you know, who are my team back then as to why do they think youth ministry is important? And this is what they had to say. So youth ministry helps equip future leaders. I mean, everybody knows that, you know, future leaders, future leaders, <laughs> they equip future leaders with sound practice 
practical biblical training. I love that statement because it follows with a why. Right? It's not just equip future leaders. You know, it's like, okay, you're equipping future leaders with what? With sound, practical, biblical training. Um, and encourage them to stay firm on course for Christ and empower them with everything that they need to carry the gospel out in the world. So the why is the why is very very clear and specific here. So you want to equip them, you want to encourage them, you want to empower them. Okay, the three E's, the Holy Trinity of the youth ministry: equip, encourage, empower. Uh, empower them with everything that they need to carry the gospel out in the world. Uh, youth ministry helps present biblical truth to young people in a relatable manner while addressing real issues that they face on a daily basis. This was another person who said, youth ministry, why is it important? Because it helps present biblical truth to young people in a relatable manner. It is important to teach the young people and show them that, hey, Bible is not just some historical book that is dated, outdated. It is still relevant in this day and age it still has answers it will always have answers it has had answers in the past it will have answers today it will go on to have answers because it is the word of god and jesus is the word isn't it and so you're reminding them that you know while you're addressing real issues that they face on a daily basis with the word of god that kind of strengthens their uh, core um, setting the stone to build the next generation of jesus followers young generation in church needs to know the right path uh, to make Christ relevant and gospel meaning to the youngsters. Okay, so the, this whole chapter, the first chapter one, is simply un us understanding who are they, uh, who are your audience, um, and why is youth ministry important, right? Um, one of the, one of the saddest uh, verses recorded in the Bible is Judge in Judges chapter two, verse ten, and you'll see a similar verse like that in uh, you know across the Bible, but then in Judges chapter 2, verse 10, it says, then there then arose a generation that they did not know who God was and what he had done for the people of Israel. There came a generation after the death of Joshua, an entire generation. We talk about future generations, right? They did not know who God was and what he had done. That means, they did not know that they were un in bondage in Egypt. They did not know that there was a leader called Moses uh, who brought, uh, who led them. Uh, and they did not know that God supernaturally provided water for them, provided food for them in the wilderness, that they were there, shared that he led them with the pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night, that he parted the Red Sea for them. They did not know any of this. So no, lack of knowledge creates what? It leads to and having an ungrateful attitude. That means you do not have an attitude of gratitude when you do not have a knowledge of something of what God has done for you. And because you do not have an attitude of gratitude, because you do not have a grateful heart, you will not be thankful. So uh, having a grateful heart will always cause you to be thankful. It, right? That's That goes hand in hand. And so because this generation did not know who God was, they were not grateful and they were not thankful. And because of that, they, it led them into uh, the seasons of oppression by different enemies uh, after that. So you, you will understand that when you read through the book of Judges. The book of Judges is not for the faint heart, but as it says. Uh, but we understand the importance of it isn't it so um and i'm glad like i said that we are all you know in the same pace in understanding that the importance of the youth ministry and impacting a young one's lives okay um so we'll continue to look into this uh very briefly um as we go on so for now we will stop uh the session one we'll take a break and we'll come back and continue okay thank you i'll see you in 10 minutes <laughs>